Harry Morrow is called by God to lead men to the truth. His ministry and teachings is anchored on the words, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He believes that what you hear has capacity and ability to make you what you ought to be and that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Now sit back and relax as you listen to today's message by Pastor Austin. Praise the name of the Lord. My name is Pastor Austin Arimuru. I'd like to welcome you to Moment of Truth. Before we continue, I'd like us to pray. Father, we worship you today. We give you all the praise because you are mighty. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to fellowship. And I pray that this word will be a blessing to my listeners in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, today, I'd like us to consider a very important topic in the scripture. I'm speaking on what I have titled the importance of harvest. The importance of harvest. I'd like us to read from the book of Matthew, chapter number uh, 30, chapter number 9 and verse number 35. Matthew chapter number 9 and verse number 35. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and Jesus went about, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Verse 38 and, not, and the last verse, it says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. A songwriter wrote a song and said, Shall I go and empty handed? He said, Shall I meet my Savior soon? Not one soul with which to greet him. Shall I empty handed go? As believers, we must learn to understand that we live in perilous times. We live in the time in a time when the gospel ought to be preached more than ever before. However, it is unfortunate that in our time. Believers are preoccupied with the unnecessary, leaving aside the very necessary. Amen. We do not need anyone to tell us that we are in perilous times. 17 years into the new millennium, how have we missed it? Before the year 2000, the church was preoccupied with missions. The church was missions focused. Missions was the preoccupation of the church. 17 years after, it seems the church had diverted its focus from being a church that is moved or motivated by harvest into something else. Praise the name of the Lord. Before 2000, the attention of the church was on souls, souls, and souls. Soul winning was the focus. Soul winning was your preoccupation. Soul winning was the top of the church. Unfortunately, it seems not to be the case anymore. The millionaire church would rather poach members from other churches rather than reaching out to the lost. The Bible says the church people who were to be saved were added to the church and not people taking over from one ministry to another ministry. What seems to be the case is that the church has lost the drive for evangelism. We have lost the drive to reach out to those who are lost. But we are focused on getting members from other ministries into our own. May God help us in the name of Jesus. As we have seen from the scripture, testimonies are great, but souls are the ultimate. Testimonies are great. It's good to have testimonies. It's good to testify of what God is doing for us. It's good to share about the great goodness of the Lord. But souls are the ultimate. In Luke chapter 15 and verse 7, Jesus was speaking. He said, I say unto you, 
that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 and 9 just persons. So there's always rejoicing in heaven when a sinner repents. And there's no rejoicing when you buy a car. There's no rejoicing when you build that mansion. There's no rejoicing when that uh, miracle happens to you in heaven. It's not special. But when a soul is saved, there is always rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Should soul winning therefore not be our preoccupation? Should soul winning not be the priority for churches? Should soul winning not be the priority for ministers? Should we not go after the lost to see that they are saved? Hallelujah. Miracles are great, like I said, but soul winning is the greatest. Jesus was performing miracles when he looked at the crowd. And he had compassion on them because he saw these people were people who were lost. They were like sheep without shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, he said, The harvest truly is free plenteous, but the laborers are few. Those with the desire to preach, those with the desire to minister to the lost are very few. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. He asked the disciples to pray for harvesters. God is looking for harvesters these days more than ever before. It is time for the church to end the endless debates. Uh, it's not it's not the time to be debating whether tithe should be paid or tithe should not be paid, given in the Old Testament or given the New Testament. This is not the time for debate. The enemy is distracting the church. Our attention is focused on the mundane and the unnecessary. It is time to be soul focused. It's better to win souls than to win debates. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11 verse 30 says, those that win souls are wise. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, hallelujah. See how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that publisheth salvation, that talks about salvation, that talks about salvation. That person, his feet are blessed. That one that talks about salvation, that ministers to the needs of the lost. This is not the time to go about and on and on endless debates, arguing about uh, scripture, arguing about uh, um, um, doctrines, arguing about your necessary. It is time for us to focus on souls, focus on the mission, focus on getting people saved. May God help our generation of believers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for hearing your word. We pray that this word will move us into what is important in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.